Do you want to know how I was able to write off this shirt in my business? Well, because I'm a business owner and <laughs> I have to look nice for my clients, I went out and bought a bunch of these shirts and I'm only going to wear them to work. And because I wouldn't have bought them if it weren't for my business existing, these are clearly a business deduction. Pretty solid defense, right? Unfortunately, it's not. This has been tried over and over again and been denied over and over again in the tax courts. It unfortunately just doesn't hold water because this is what the IRS would consider adaptable to ordinary wear. In other words, there's nothing about this shirt that designates it for my business. Even if I were to make an office policy with myself that I have to wear this shirt, it would not hold any water with the IRS. Because again, I don't have to wear this shirt in the office. I can wear it anywhere else. It is not a requirement in my industry to have this shirt on. But obviously, we're not here to learn about all the ways we can't write something off in our business, but how we might be able to write something off in our business. And when it comes to clothing, in my opinion, based on court cases and prior defenses, there are three categories that you're going to want to fit your clothes within to have a solid defense on writing them off in your business. But before we do that, let me quickly give you the IRS's definition of how one might be able to write off clothing in their business. According to the IRS, to deduct clothes as a business expense, you must follow these three requirements. Number one, the clothes must be required by the employer. Number two, the clothes must not be suitable for general or personal wear. And number three, they must not be worn for general or personal wear. So with that said, here are the three categories that I believe best fit within these three parameters by the IRS to give you an idea of how you might be able to write things off in your business. Number one, something with your logo and or name and title on it is going to be an easily defendable thing as a write-off for your business. Number two, something that is industry-specific wear is going to be clearly justifiable as a write-off in your business. And then number three, a bit of a tough one, but wardrobe and costuming is another defensible deductible piece of clothing in your business. Number one, the most obvious of all of these categories is add your logo and or name and title on your shirt, and you're gonna have a solid defense for this being deductible in your business. Because you've now transformed this from a adaptable to ordinary and general wear shirt to a uniform or a promotional piece for your business. Just as a quick example, if I were to walk up to a new client who's never met me before wearing this plain shirt, they may or may not know that I actually work there. If I walk up to that same client with my company logo or my name and my title on the shirt, they're going to have a pretty good idea that I'm someone that actually works in that office because I'm to them essentially wearing a uniform. And not only that, as I go about my day, if I'm going to be wearing this shirt out in public, it is now a promotional piece letting the world know that I am a CPA or letting the world know that I work for Cornerstone Accounting so that they can ask me questions about taxes because we all love to be asked questions about taxes when we're out and about. Number two, industry-specific wear. This would be things that are clearly not adaptable to ordinary wear, such as scrubs for the traveling nurse who owns her own business, or steel-toed boots or gloves or a hard hat for someone in the construction industry, or maybe coveralls or overalls for someone who is a plumber in the plumbing industry. These clothes, while they could be worn in public, would be odd and are clearly industry-specific things that they need in order to do their job. Those are things that wouldn't require your company logo to be on them in order for them to be deductible in your business because they clearly are needed for you to do your job. Unlike a collared shirt in an accounting office. I don't have to wear this shirt. It is not a requirement of my industry. It does not keep me any safer. It does not keep me any cleaner. It is simply a shirt I wished to wear. Number three, wardrobe and costuming. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Nick, this seems a bit niche. I'm, I'm not an actor or an actress. There's no way this could ever apply to me. And while it is true that this did come about from the entertainment industry, people that are actresses or actors who bought apparel or costumes for a role that they were playing and they weren't reimbursed for it, and they could write this off as a business expense. But thanks to the advent of social media, there are a lot more people in this entertainment industry than there were before. Now, before you get ahead of yourself and start thinking, oh, okay, so everything I wear in my videos, I'll just call wardrobe or costuming and I'll be able to write it off in my business. That is not what's meant by wardrobe or costuming. And if you try and use this as your defense, you're going to fail egregiously. Think of wardrobe and costuming as something that you're exclusively wearing online in your videos in order to build up your persona. And when the cameras are off, so is that thing. The best example that I can give you to leave you with something tangible to work with is your average finance bro. In every single one of Ethan's videos, he is wearing this Patagonia vest. That is because he is playing a character. 
he is exemplifying the average finance bro. And the Patagonia vest helped him do that. It gave him that persona. He more than likely is not going to be wearing this around after these videos, after he's done with the entertainment that he's participating in. Even though it doesn't have his name or his logo or anything like that on there, it's clearly a piece of wardrobe or costuming in order to enhance the character that he's playing. So in the end, just understand, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to write off clothing in your business, at least not defensively so. But if you're looking to take more expenses for clothing in your business, talk about it with your accountant. Make sure that you fit within the parameters of what is defensible for your business, and don't give the same tired defense that has been denied a thousand times before. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and hit that notification bell. And if you see any videos across TikTok or Instagram, be sure to tag me there. I would love to give you my opinion. Again, thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.